how to stop basing self-worth on others. Do you feel like you are not enough, that if people knew you, they wouldn't like you, or that your value is only what you can offer and not who you are? If this sounds like you, these are signs that you are basing your self-worth on others. I struggled with this for years, and I still do at times. We're all, we all want to be liked and accepted, but that shouldn't be our compelling drive or our foundation of our self-worth. Stick with me and I will tell you a story on how I transformed from basing all my worth on outward affirmations to an intrinsically driven sense of who I am. This was tough for me to do, and I have three points, really, that sum this up. Run over the quick points, and I'll give you a story of how I implemented them in my life and what they did for me. My name is James Burnham, and I work as a coach for fear. I teach people how to metabolize fear and turn it into excitement so you can move into spaces in your life that you're resisting and overcome challenges that you never thought you could do. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? This is my story of a way that I implemented this into my life. First of all, the thing I had to do was understand my inner dialogue. What were the words that I spoke to myself? The next thing that I had to do was own my strengths and my weaknesses. Being able to do that was transformative for me. I was very aware of my weaknesses, not so willing to accept my strengths. You may tilt the other way. You gotta own it all. The third thing was I had to learn how to be kind to myself once I understood my inner dialogue. I had to change how I spoke to myself. Rather than berating, when I failed, I had to support. It was a huge transition for me that really changed all my outcomes and the performance that I did. To be truthful, my whole life I spent hiding in some way. In some ways I was very authentic, but particularly when it came to my most intimate relationships with my family, with my spouse, I was unable to show up because I did not believe that I had enough worth and I sought for my value in the eyes of those closest to me. I was not like I think most people. If you weren't my close friend or you weren't a member of my family, somebody in my intimate circle, I truly don't really care a whole lot what you think. It made me appear bold and brave in many ways in certain circles that I moved in. In business, I could say what I wanted to say. Doing things with people that I didn't know, I had no worries at all. But when it came to those closest to me, I would morph myself into whatever I believed those people needed to see in order to win their love and acceptance. This was extremely problematic in my marriage. I met a girl that I really liked. I thought she was amazing. And anything that she requested of me that made me feel like, you know, maybe I should change what I'm doing here, I did. I just changed without any question. And what happens when you do that, if you're someone like me, and I see many people that do this, when you give up a core part of yourself without question, without any sort of expectation, there is a part of you that recognizes what you're giving. And so there will be times when you make a request of that person because you believe you've given so much and they don't meet that request in the way you expect because they don't even understand that you have sacrificed so much to be with them. It creates conflict in your marriage. It creates conflict in your close relationships because you are giving without letting them know. It also creates conflicts because you're not letting them see who you are. They do not understand that you are somebody that doesn't like to do this. You are somebody that has a different agenda or schedule or goals or drive. And the more you do this, without expressing your need, the more painful the load is to carry. I like to think of it honestly as doing the splits. Maybe you have a flexible personality and when somebody asks something of you, it's easy for you to drop down into the splits of whatever it is that they're asking you to do. But then if you're asked to hold that position for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 years, it becomes extremely painful. So. If you're about to drop into the splits for somebody emotionally or offering yourself that, that is the moment you know that you need to start expressing who you are so that you can let them see that you have self-worth. The ability to do this comes from honestly learning your inner thoughts. I didn't know that my inner thoughts were so diminishing. 
I didn't know that I felt so badly about myself because I didn't look at that stuff. I thought it was normal for people to berate themselves. And in fact, it probably is more common than I would like to admit. We beat ourselves up all the time, trying to whip ourselves into shape. And when that happens, we don't give our own inner selves the credence and the openness to meet challenges that we should. It also keeps us from admitting our greatest strengths or our greatest weaknesses. When you're in the attitude of berating yourself, you out of your, your just internal mechanism of your whole life will push away things that make you uncomfortable because you're going to pile onto that discomfort with your own beat up. So we are unable to learn as much as we can from our mistakes. And I did this for years. I held things at bay. I kept things at, out of sight in my marriage that I just didn't agree with because I didn't want to make my spouse uncomfortable. In the process of doing that, I felt deeply uncomfortable much of the time. When I finally realized what I was doing and I was able to offer myself kindness for being that way, for behaving that way and not being able to show up, I was able to muster the courage to finally stand up and say, I have enough value, I have enough worth to act in the way that I believe I should, rather than hiding and skirting around and pretending to be something. I don't know if you know that movie, um, Old School, with Will, <laughs> Will Ferrell. He's this funny, big, you know, Will Ferrell guy, and he's married to a woman who he thinks he loves, and he's trying to be everything he can for her, and you know, do all the things that she likes to do, and live within this defined sort of role that she has of what he should be when he is not that guy. And he'd be hanging out with his friends and they would, he, he, a call from his wife would come in and he'd say, shh, be quiet everybody, I can't let my wife know. And yet every man there, either their wife was with them or their wife knew and had no problem with it, but he was that guy hiding because he didn't want his wife to know what he was up to because she felt like it was bad and he was just trying to be the very thing she wanted rather than being himself. He changed who he was just to make her happy, but he changed so much, he lost himself. That was me. I was that guy. And I would watch that show and almost ache a little bit because of the pain of it. And it was weak and it was mean to me and it was mean to my spouse because she didn't get a choice to, of who she was being with. She was choosing to be with a guy that was pretending. And when I finally stood up and I finally showed who I was, I was rejected and it was hard, but it didn't diminish my self-worth. It allowed me to stand and be seen and build my self-worth because then those that could see who I truly was were able to be my friends openly. I was able to move freely. I was able to feel like a man instead of a little boy scurrying around and hiding like I used to do for my mom. <laughs> that is a change. And that is what self-worth does for you. It allows you to move with authority. It allows you to move with power. It allows you to recognize that you have strength and weaknesses. So you can learn and you can move in the space where you're best adapted to move rather than trying to fit in and get these hits of approval that last so, so shortly. So if you want to learn how to truly find your self-worth, You've got to start by internally understanding your dialogue and what you believe and speak to yourself. I have another video that's gonna help you with that, how to feel worthy of love. So stick around and check it out. Like, subscribe, click the bell, don't miss any content. Here comes that video. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm James Burnham. I'd love to hear your comments, things that you have to say about what you do to build your own self-worth. Hey, we all need a little bit more love, so click on this video. It's coming up right now.